Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, we're going to look at the IEEE 754 encoding for single precision floating point numbers. Okay, so what do I mean by that? IEEE 754 is a standard that was created in 1985. Its first version came out in there. And it was a standard way for everybody who built computers and digital electronics to encode floating point numbers, okay? And when we're gonna first look at what we call single precision encoding, which uses 32 bits to represent the number. There are other formats. Uh, there's double precision, which uses 64, and there's many, there's a couple other precision, uh, there's a couple other encoding techniques, but we always want to start with 32 bits because we'll go through this in depth and then we'll extend it to the other ones and the other ones will make sense. Okay. So the anatomy is that you are going to take a floating point number. You're going to represent it in base two scientific notation, which is going to be represented with three specific fields, dedicated fields. You're going to have a sign. You're going to have a mantissa and you're gonna have an exponent. And since this is binary, this is scientific notation, so the mantissa times two raised to an exponent. Once you're in this form, there are three specific fields within the floating point number that hold the sign exponent mantissa. However, the IEEE 754 standard has a little bit of manipulation in terms of how you take the values and actually store them in this word. So we don't have, it's not a direct encoding in terms of the mantissa and the exponent. We have to do a little bit of something to it before we stuff it in there. And it turns out that they do this just to make the math a little bit easier. So let's start with the easy part. The sign bit is the easiest. The sign is the most significant bit and it lives by itself. It doesn't, it's not, this isn't a two's complement number where it is used within the entire word. It is a lone bit. So every number in here has a positive representation and a negative representation. And you are indeed going to have two values of zero. Okay. You're going to have a positive and a negative. And so it's very easy. It uses standard signed encoding, which is a zero means positive and a one means negative. So that's the easiest part. Okay, let's move to the exponent. The exponent in the single precision encoding approach of IEEE 754 holds what we call a biased exponent. And this is essentially a shifted version of the original exponent. So if you think about a, a scientific number, uh, you're gonna have an exponent that's positive and negative. If it's positive, that means you shifted the radix point to the left in the number. If it's negative, you shifted it to the right. But in this situation, IEEE 754 did not want to have negative numbers in this exponent because it makes the math easier later. And so what they did is they said, all right, I know you have negative numbers. Uh, you're you're going to have a potentially negative exponent when you put the form, put the number in scientific notation. But what we're going to do is we're going to shift that up so that all the values are considered positive. So how much do you shift it up? Well, if you think about an 8-bit number, you have 256 unique codes that can be represented. And so if you were a sign number, you'd basically have half of them for negative, half of them for positive. So what they do is they say, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, whatever your exponent is, we're going to shift it up by 127. So for example, if I had an exponent of two raised to the zero, so my exponent was zero, I'm going to shift that up by adding 127 to it. If I had an exponent that was like a positive 127, meaning that I had shifted the, the radix point left to 127 spots, I would add 127 to that and you would get up to a value of 254. And same, similarly, if I had shifted the radix point to the right, 126 spots, I would shift that up to one. And that's just the way that it's done. So 127 is the bias. Now you might be looking at this and going, well, if you have eight bits, these, these are not the extent the full range of bits, right? So you would have all ones and all zeros. So you'd have all ones could potentially represent 255 and all zeros would represent zero. But you'll notice that we don't use those because IEEE 754 reserves the exponent codes zero, all zeros, and all ones, which is two, zero and 255, 
for special use. Okay, so we'll look at that in a little bit. But that's why it's kind of uh, strange the first time you look at it because it's not only do you shift it, but you don't get the maximum and the minimum potential values in here. Okay, so let's do, let's just do a quick example of how we're gonna shift or what this would look like, okay? It's interesting because this is where you kind of mix binary and decimal when you're doing things by hand, uh, but that's just kind of the way it is. So what if you had a number that was like 110.101? One, one, and this is your binary number, this is a fixed point binary number, and you're gonna put this into scientific notation. So you come along and you're like, okay, well, I know that I'm gonna, move this over two spots. So I can rewrite this as 1.10101 times 2 raised to the 2, okay? So you're sitting there and you're like, well, my exponent is obviously 2, right? That is your scientific notation exponent. If you wanted your biased exponent, that is going to be equal to 127 plus 2, and that's 129. So now when you look at this, we're mixing bases. This is in binary, but we always we always think about the exponent in terms of base 10, because when we add the bias to it, it's base 10, 120, and then we add 2 base 10, and we have 129 base 10. So then you got to take this convert it to binary, which is gonna be some binary code with that can be represented in eight bits. And that then is your biased binary exponent that actually goes into the exponent field of the number, okay? Let's do another example. What if you had like 0 0.011, okay? So you say, I wanna represent that in scientific notation. So I wanna move my radix point to the right by two. So my new number would be 1.1 .1 times 2 to the negative 2. And you're like, okay, that's my scientific notation or my scientific notation exponent. And it's in decimal. And I have to bias it. So my biased exponent would be 127 plus negative two, and in this situation it'd be 125 decimal. So that's the value that's going into the exponent bits. So I'd convert that to binary, and then that goes into the exponent. So that's why you have this thing called the biased exponent. It's, it's strange when you first see it because it's not a direct encoding of the exponent, but when you look at building circuitry later, that's it's advantageous, okay? So that is part of the 754 uh, standard for single precision flow. Okay, so let's take a look at this. The mantissa, <laughs> okay. Again, the mantissa is, is the number that exists uh, separate from the times two to the exponent. However, if you look at binary numbers, like look at this example right here, you notice that the number to the left of the radix point is always one in binary. And so what happens is that this, the IEEE 754 standard said, we know that that bit is always gonna be one, so we can just not put it in the 32 bits and instead, only store the fractional component of the mantissa. And that means you have a one that is implied, okay? So if I came in here, let's do this other, this example right here. I have this mantissa that sits like this. I would only put this part into the mantissa bits of my single precision floating buoy point number. And down here, I would come along, I would only put this in the in the bits of the mantissa. It's an implied one, meaning that when you go to read this, you read out those bits, but you know that you're going to have a dot and a one in front of it on any number that you pull out. Okay, so that's the mantissa with an implied one. Okay, so what do we use those special codes in the exponent for of zero and 255? Well, it turns out that the IEEE 754 uh, standard has all these different functions and, and capabilities. And when you don't use all of them, like it's very, I, I would almost say not every computer implements the full standard. Uh, most people say that they implement a, a subset of IEEE 754 or kind of like 754 light. Uh, but, but there are commonalities of most things. So here's a couple common ones. If you use a combination of the sine, exponent, mantissa, where all of them are zeros, that represents positive zero. 
And if you did one on the sine bit, zero on the exponent and zero, that's negative zero. So these are kind of like special values that are allowed within IEEE 754. And they're easy to identify because you can just like look for these codes in your logic and say, oh, that's positive zero, this is negative zero. And this for, for when the exponent's all ones, you have a similar thing. You can have zero, all ones, and all zeros, and that would represent positive infinity. And then here you'd have a one on the sign, all ones in the exponent, and zero on the minutissa. You'd have negative infinity. Now, these are just the most common ones. There's many more combinations of all these that give you things like not a number and non-normal numbers and stuff like that. But these are just, it's an example of some of the capabilities that you have within the standard that represent things that aren't numbers. They're representations of something abstract. Okay, now let's look at how large of a number we can represent. Floating point numbers have a thing called the range, all right? And so we look at how big of a number we can represent and how small of a number we can represent. So if you look at, based upon what we just looked at, if I wanted to find the largest number, what I would do is I'd load up the mantissa with all the legal values, so all the ones that I can stuff in there. I've got an implied one also, and then I would have the largest exponent possible. The largest biased exponent I can have is all ones except for the least significant position. So this would be 254. And we don't get 255 because of what we just said. It's reserved for special functions. And so if I looked at this, I have a don't care in the sign because it really is like, it could be a positive or a negative, but it's just a don't care when you look at the largest in terms of magnitude. Here's what your code would be. You'd have one, 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 zero, and then all ones. Binary scientific notation, that would represent plus or minus one dot, and that's the implied one, and they have all those ones in there, and then times two to the 127. Remember, we had to pull out the bias when we took this code, which was 254, we subtract the bias to get to time to two raised to the exponent of 127, and that would represent a massive number, 3.4028235 times 10 to the 38 decimal. This is huge, a huge, huge number. So the largest number that we can have is very, very big. And, that, and that's a really powerful thing with floating point numbers. Okay. Similar uh, vein, how do you find the smallest number that we can represent, the closest to zero? Well, the mantissa would be loaded all the way up with zeros, okay? So as small as small as you can make it. It still has that implied one, so you can't get rid of that. But then the biased exponent, it's gonna be all zeros except for one. We can't get all the way low because, all the way to zero because it's reserved for a special function. So that's what the lowest value would look like. So if we looked at this in IEEE format, you'd have seven zeros, a one, and then you'd have 23 zeros. That would then be put into binary scientific form of plus or minus one dot, and that's where the implied one comes from with the mantissa, then all zeros, and then you'd have times two raised to the negative 126. And that comes from this number is one, and you have to extract the bias by subtracting 127 in order to get down to negative 126. So that is also a tiny, tiny number. 1.1754943 times 10 to the negative 38. So just so small. You've moved the fraction point, the radix point, 38 spots. So this is the this is a huge power of floating point numbers, is that they have a huge, huge range. But there is one drawback, and that is the precision of floating point numbers. So range is how big and small you can get. Precision is how close to an actual decimal number you can represent. Floating point does not or cannot promise to give the exact number of every possible real value, but it tries to get close, okay? So if you have some number that has like 10 significant digits, you might not be able to represent it exactly, but it'll try. Okay, so let's take a look at how accurate you can be. You have significant digits in when you talk about accuracy, and that's like you start with a certain number of significant digits, and then if you try to add, add stuff to it that has less significant digits, the number becomes it goes with the lower number of significant digits, so you, you lose accuracy. If you look at this 32-bit number, you've got a mantissa that has 23 bits in addition to 
an implied one. So you have 24 bits of significant significant kind of bits. Okay, 24 bits of significant bits, meaning that these are loaded with, with your information. Okay, this is real stuff. Okay, and so that comes from 23 explicit and one implicit. If you converted that to decimal to see how many bits you actually, that represents in terms of significant digits, it turns out it's only about six to nine significant digits in decimal. So it's not as as great as you might think. And if you if you tried to look at an example of that, let's say that we took pi and you wrote it out to 15 significant digits. Okay, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's what pi is. And you tried to represent that with a 32-bit floating point number, you would only get a number that is accurate to about seven bits and then you'd start seeing the representation being different from the actual value and that's because you don't have the the precision in this type of number to represent this many significant digits in decimal so huge range in a 32 32 bit single precision floating point number but not that great of precision okay so that's kind of the that's kind of the the trade-off now if you want more precision guess what you do you add more mantissa bits and that's why you have other encoding techniques such as a 64 bit and they even have 128 bit and even more than that that get you more precision but we are focusing on the 32 bit single precision encoding right now okay so that's an overview of that particular encoding approach and again this is all coming from the ieee 754 standard all right that's it we'll see you